All right, let's go ahead and jump in. We've got a uh, kind of a cool topic to cover before we get into a little bit of nitty gritty with stats uh, a little in a little bit. Uh, so let's go over to the materials and schedule. Um, so yesterday we really spent a lot of time talking about uh, data visualization. So doing that in a user interface using a skis, but then also using ggplot and really getting into the weeds of customizing your visualizations. Um, so today we're going to backtrack a little bit and talk about something called factors, uh, which we've talked about a little bit already. Um, but I think now uh, that we've done data visualization and we've done data summarization, uh, we can have a new appreciation for what they're able to help us do. Um, so let's dive right in. Okay, uh, so factors to reiterate uh, something we've talked about a little bit already. Um, a factor is a special kind of character vector uh, where the elements, they have predefined groups or levels. So if you think about character, usually this is something that's uh, made out of letters. Uh, so the text usually is going to have those quotation marks, uh, but factors are just a little bit more special they have levels that are important to us. And so you can think of these as qualitative or categorical variables. Um, so for example, uh, I've put together a really simple uh, vector here of the type or class character. Um, and so it's really just a set of uh, colors, right? Yellow, red, blue, over and over again. Um, and if I were to jump into R, uh, it'd be pretty straightforward to put this together. So we could have red, and I love that our studio nowadays uh, previews those colors for you. Okay, and uh, we'll run that and ask it what uh, class it is, and it's going to tell me it's a character class. However, uh, I let's say I wanted to create a factor out of these uh, colors here. Um, I could use a special function called factor to actually convert that into a factor type. So let's say I take, and I'm going to zoom in just a tad, uh, take uh, x and use the factor function on it to create that factor. And you can see it's populated in my environment. And I uh, have the character vector here, but uh, you can see that this factor that I've just created here in my environment uh, is, is a little bit different. It's telling me it's a factor with three levels instead of just printing it out up here. Um, so once again, class of x fact, uh, it's gonna tell me that it is a factor type. Okay, uh, so to reiterate, factors have levels and character types do not. So if I were to print both of these, it's, uh, the character type just gives me the values versus the factor actually tells me the levels down below saying, okay, well, you have uh, blue, red, and yellow are your, are your possibilities. And by default, those levels are going to be in alphanumerical order. So right here, we have blue, then red, then yellow, because uh, it's ordered by alphabetical order. OK, so let's say we had something a little bit more complicated. We had uh, a, a bunch of other iterations of those colors in here. And once again, converting that to a factor. So I have this factor x fact. Uh, it tells me the values and then only the levels, uh, the unique values that that factor is able to have. Um, and so let's say I wanted to extract those. I could use the function levels to give me those. OK. Um, so I'm pulling those unique possibilities out of the factor. 
uh, so the levels function is pretty handy for that. All right, so when we're dealing with factors in the tidyverse, you know, working on wrangling data, making plots with ggplot and all that good stuff, there's a fantastic package called Forecats that's really helpful for working with factors. So um, I think it's a kind of cute little cats in a box here. Okay, uh, we've talked a little bit about sometimes base R versus the tidyverse way of doing things. They have kind of different dialects for doing similar things. This is a case where, where that's happening. So the factor function is from base R and can convert those character types into a factor type. The as underscore factor function is from Fortcats. So it's a uh, add on package it's a little bit um, more fancy you could say and is made to work with those tibbles and tidyverse functions that we've been talking about a lot during this class both of them do something quite similar right they'll change a variable to be of class factor um, but they work a little bit differently in how they report those values so factor from base r We'll order everything alphabetically unless told otherwise. And we'll get to that shortly. And as underscore factor, we'll order by first appearance unless told otherwise. Um, and if you're assigning your manu your levels manually, either uh, function is going to work fine. OK, um, so let's kind of see this in action. Um, so I have uh, created this uh, character type and turned it into a factor here using the factor function. Um, and so when I do uh, x fact, it's giving me blue, red, and yellow because it's the base R function that I'm using and it's ordering them alphabetically. But um, the as underscore factor is going to work just a little bit differently. So uh, let's do as underscore factor and do use it on the same character type here. Uh, notice that the reported levels are just slightly different. It's going to order them by first appearance. So if I take a look up here, I have red first, then yellow, then blue, even though that's not alphabetical, that's how um, forecasts goes by default. OK, so let's get in the weeds a little bit. So now that we've seen that kind of basic example of how factors are ordered and, and how they work a little bit, in R, let's play a little bit with the data set. And we're going to have to do a little cleaning because this is some real data. So we're going to use data on student dropouts from the state of California during the 2016-2017 school year. You can find out more about the data here. Um, and just taking a brief look at the data, uh, we've got this field here at the very bottom. And this is probably pretty small. Uh, CDS code, which is code for the individual school's name. Um, so we don't actually have the name of the school, but rather a code to refer to an individual school. Okay, uh, and you can download the data to follow along here or use this uh, read to limb function here. So let me go ahead and copy the URL and um, I'm going to go ahead and read it into into R. I'll make another chunk, just separate it out a little bit. I'm going to make a object called dropouts. And I'm going to read delim because this is a txt file. So that tells me it's probably tab delimited. It could be delimited by something else. Um, and so you may have to actually look at the first couple lines of the data uh, to determine that for sure. And uh, I want to tell it that the delim is tab. OK, uh, so I've read this data in. I've got quite a few lines of uh, data here. 
Um, but just to get a quick look, I've got CDS code. Um, I've got it broken down by gender and um, ethnicity. Um, and so I'm not exactly sure what those numbers really refer to, but just know it's broken down. Um, and if I scroll all the way to the right, um, the uh, different D7, D8, D9, D10, et cetera, those are dropouts by different years. Okay. And then the 16 to 17 school year. Okay. Uh, so we're going to leverage all of the cool things that we've learned so far in the class to actually summarize this data and clean it up just a bit. Uh, so let's say we want to find, uh, we're not really interested in breaking down by gender or ethnicity or any of that, but we want to aggregate uh, within each, um, each class of high school. So uh, instead of uh, just looking at uh, grade nine broken down across all these groups, um, we want to take each school and we want to find uh, the total number of grade 9, 10, 11, 12 dropouts for those. So let's do a little grouping, a little summarizing here. So let's take dropouts and we'll go ahead and group it by school. So that was that CDS code. Okay. And that's not going to actually change the data itself, but rather how the summarizing function is going to work next. We'll summarize by each grade. And so let's say I want, instead of D9, I want to refer to that as the freshman uh, class. And we'll do the total sum number of dropouts. Go all the way down to grade nine. And then likewise, yeah, yeah. So that's always something that we could look at. Um, so uh, let's say we wanted to first take a look at um, just like the number of NAs in our data. So let's say we want to um, take, I don't know, just select a certain column and we're taking a look at this D9 column um, and we can just get a quick glance really quick. And let's see if there's any um, NAs. Okay, so it looks like there's not any, um, and we could continue that for several of the columns. Um, just off the top of my head, I want to say this data set's pretty complete, um, but yeah, that's always a good policy before you start um, going down any uh, analyses paths. Yeah, no dropouts dropped, exactly. Um, yeah, question? Maybe it was the same question, <laughs> but yeah, good, good, always good to pay attention. And just with the, any of those summarization functions, um, it's good to pay attention to that. Okay, um, so let's continue on. Um, so we're kind of being a little bit repetitive here, but um, it's good to um, kind of write this out. And we'll talk more about um, how to do this in a bit more iterative fashion um, at the very end of the class. All right, uh, so I like to kind of take a quick look at it before I reassign it. Um, so this is looking pretty good, right? Um, I've got new columns that I've created in this summary table, um, and then I've got a huge table uh, for each, uh, a line for each uh, school here. We'll go ahead and reassign it. All right, uh, so I've got that summary data now.
Okay, uh, but maybe I want to pivot it so it's in that tidy format so I can maybe make some plots and do some other things with it. Um, so let's go ahead and clean it up into long format. So we'll take dropouts and we'll pipe that into pivot longer. So we want to make it into long format. And so we have a couple options. Uh, first, we want to start with what we actually want to pivot. Um, and so I could say, as I have over here, um, that uh, and I want to pivot every single column except the school. But I could also write those columns out. Um, so something like writing them out like that. Um, and then I want to tell it, all right, well, what is that new column that is going to store the values freshman, sophomore, junior, senior? Um, maybe I want to call that grade. And then those values, maybe I want to call that uh, number or count of dropouts. All right. So once again, I like to run this just to make sure that it's looking how I want. Great. Um, so I have the school here. I should have four entries for every school um, and a total number of dropouts for each class here. We'll reassign one more time. Great. And again, I can take a look at the data. Looks good. This school over here not, not doing so well. OK, um, so let's inspect this data a little bit now that we've done a little bit of cleanup. Maybe first we'd want to um, look into those columns a little bit more. Um, but now that it's in tidy format, I do want to make sure that uh, the, the class of the data is actually appropriate. Um, so first, taking a look at the data. One thing I'm noticing is uh, I've got two columns of character type data. It is a little weird that the, the school itself being all numbers, it's a, a little bit weird that that's a character type. But because we're dealing with discrete data, I think that's probably OK. Um, because we're not trying to add school numbers to each other or anything. They're really just a standalone um, ID. Um, but then for grade, I've got the character type as well. Uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, as well as uh, some, some num uh, number data, right? So the number of dropouts, that seems good. Um, so our right now, because grade is a character type, it does not realize there's any order associated with my data. So it's going to assume that I want to put things in alphabetical order. However, we know that there is some kind of level with this character data. So maybe we want to go in order of ascending grade, right? So from freshman to sophomore, junior, and then finally senior. OK, so for the next steps, uh, let's work with a small subset of data just to make sure things uh, are running smoothly and uh, quickly. Um, so we'll use the slice sample function for that. It's really nice to pull out just a, a number of rows of data from our data set. So we'll set seed so that uh, the random selection is the same across all of us. And we'll do a subset. We'll do slice sample of dropouts. And let's tell it we want, uh, I think I said 32 rows here. All right. So really short data set, but giving us a little data to work with um, different schools, different grades, and such. All right, 
Uh, so let's make a plot with this data. Let's say we weren't thinking about character type or factor type. Let's let's go ahead and actually get plotting and see uh, what we can do with this data. So let's take dropouts subset. And we can actually pipe that directly into the ggplot function. We want to tell it uh, the aesthetics. So you can do mapping. You can also exclude this. It usually knows that this is the first um, argument that you want to supply. And uh, we want that grade on the x-axis. We're going to create some box plots. And we want the number of dropouts aggregated on the y-axis. Okay, if I go ahead and run that, um, remember I'll get a naked plot with my axes established, but no actual stuff on the plot. So we're off to a good start, but we might actually want to put some stuff on the plot itself. So remember here, we don't want to use the pipe, we want to use the plus sign. Um, and we'll add our geoms, or remember our decorations to the cake. So we'll go geom box plot. Take a look at that. All right. And maybe we want uh, a nice theme to it. All right. Uh, so nice looking plot to start. Uh, this, you know, I, I could get a quick summary of the data and take a quick look at it here. Um, but if I look down at grade, it's plotted and organized alphabetically. Right, and maybe this, maybe that's what I would want um, ordinarily. But because I know it should be freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, uh, maybe I want it like that in the plot. So right now, I don't really love this order. Okay, so currently grade is of class character, but let's go ahead and change that to class factor. Uh, which is going to allow us to specify the levels or order of those values that we're interested in. Okay, um, so what we could do is go ahead and take uh, that grade variable in the data set and actually use mutate to go ahead and switch it up. So let's do that. Let's take dropouts subset. And we'll go ahead and pipe that into mutate. And we want to change the grade column. All right. And so what do we want to change that to? So we'll talk about this. Uh, we could use either the factor or the as.factor function for this. Let's just go ahead and use factor here because we're actually specifying what those levels are. So. So we're good. We can we can take that approach. We'll take factor, I'll break the line to make it a little cleaner and easier to look at. Um, so we'll take a factor of grade, and we'll tell it what levels we want. So let's give it a vector of those possible levels, right here. We'll tell it freshman sophomore, junior, and senior. And so let's take a look uh, at, at what that looks like before we do any reassigning. OK, and so right away I can see that grade is now um, a factor up here. OK, so we've changed things up a bit. We'll reassign this to dropouts and we'll call it factor so that we can kind of distinguish between the two and run that. If we were to go ahead and pull out that grade column and ask R what those levels are, it would give it to us in order because we've specified the order up here.
All right, and so once again, it's going to tell you that it's a factor. All right, so let's do that same plot that we made before and see how things have changed up a bit now that we have uh, created a factor instead of a um, character type. So let's take dropouts factor instead of dropouts subset. And we'll pipe that into ggplot once again. We'll do the aesthetics as grade and number of dropouts. Again, we want to use our plus sign. We'll add the box plot. Because we've already established x and y up there, we don't need to specify it again inside the box plot. So let's go ahead and uh, looks like I probably want to pipe that in there. All right, can add a little theming. OK, so now we see things in an order that might make more sense to us. Fantastic. OK, um, because uh, it's not just uh, plotting that factors can be useful for. So let's talk a little bit about some other things where having a factor with a specified order can actually be really handy. So uh, let's say we're taking a look at the, um, the dropouts data. And uh, we just want to arrange it by each grade and look at it that way. So let's arrange by grade, take a look. And uh, it's actually reordered some of the lines of data so that all the grades are together. It's equivalent to your sort in Excel um, or some of your other tools. Um, but it's ordered it by freshman and junior. It's ordered it alphabetically. Um, but you know that's not really what I want, right? So let's do the factor version and try once again. In this version of the data, grade is now ordered by those levels that I specified. All right, so again, seeing that difference, it's freshman, junior, now it's freshman, sophomore, a little bit more appropriate. All right, so this actually uh, applies to our tables that we might be creating too. So uh, let's say we wanna do a summary table and just do the total number, the total sum of dropouts by each group. I don't care about specific schools. I just wanna know how many people in my subset of these California schools are, are uh, at risk. So, I could take my dropout subset. And let's say I want to go ahead and group by grade. And I want to summarize and get a sum of dropouts. OK, so again, it's ordering this character type alphabetically, but that's not really what I want. I want it ordered by the level that I specified. So taking that factor version of the data set, grouping it by that factor, and then summarizing it with the total sum. All right, that looks a little bit better. And notice that the data is, is not different, right? Factor, the, the fact that grade is a factor in this version of the data set 
is just changing the way it sorts the data, right? It's not changing the data itself. Okay, so once again, seeing how those data switch in terms of the sum lines of the summary table. All right, um, so uh, looking at our data here, um, we can see there's kind of like freshmen, then it goes up a little bit, then the juniors are really super studious and not missing, you know, nobody's dropping out, and then senior, you know, maybe we have a, an outlier up there. Um, so maybe we wanted to order it by increasing values. Maybe I didn't really care about the grade order, but I wanted to order it by the increasing numbers here. So um, once again, here is our plot uh, that we created in the previous steps. So one more time. Our uh, very nice plot here. Um, but yeah, let's think about how we might rearrange these um, in different ways. So I'm going to copy this code here for the plot and just put it down here one more time. All right, so this is where four cats is really cool, really powerful. Um, so let's say I want to actually reorder this factor on the fly. So I can actually put that inside my plotting, um, my plotting code and uh, reorder that axis on the fly. So I'm going to use this function called uh, factor reorder to reorder the grades on the x axis. So uh, let's go down uh, back to this plot and say, all right, well, um, I'm going to clean this up just a tad, just to make it easier to look at. Okay, um, but instead of just having it ordered by grade by the default factor, let's go ahead and do factor reorder from the forecast package. All right, and I'm going to actually need to tell it what I want to reorder, what I want it to reorder by, and then some function applied to that uh, second argument here. So uh, let's break this down. We're saying, OK, we want to reorder grade. We want to order it by the mean number of dropouts. OK, so taking grade, we're taking which column we're referring to and the function that we're applying for that column. All right, so. We have the same information here, but we've just reordered the x axis. And if you were to think about taking um, the, the mean of all of these groups, that's what it's going to order it by. Of course, uh, this uh, <laughs> x axis label is pretty ugly. So let's think about uh, ways we could clean that up a bit. And we'll tell it x should be uh, grade, something a little more neat. All right, so that's reordering on the fly. Uh, maybe we had some other factor that we wanted to reorder by. Uh, that column will go here. And then the function you supply to create that order follows. All right, so let's uh, make our data a little bit more complicated. Let's add another variable. And so let's say we wanted to assess which grade has not only the most dropouts, but the most incidences of being tardy. Uh, so let's add another simulated variable uh, with random values 0 to 7, just you know between 0 and 7 late students. Um, and we'll set seed again so that our results are consistent each time we run the code. And so uh, we'll use, do that using the mutate function. So mutate is a great way to add columns in addition to changing columns. So let's take uh, set seed so we can all stay on the same page. And let's add to dropouts FCT or dropouts factor. We'll take dropouts factor. And we'll pipe that into the mutate function. And let's say we want to create 
uh, a column called tardy and this I know it's a little tricky, but this can also be without quotes here. Um, we have it in quotes on the slide here, but um, you could have it either way. And we'll sample and remember this is like way back in uh, last week uh, we'll sample values from zero to seven we'll sample it 32 times and we'll do with replacement. We'll sample zero to seven. And we'll do 32. And replace equals true. And not sample samples sample. <laughs> All right, so if I run just that bit of code, you can kind of see this uh, vector that's already been created for us. And if we run the whole thing and take a look at the data, uh, we can see I have a new um, a new column here. Okay, and uh, because it does make my code more readable, I should probably put the size here. Okay, it doesn't change the way it runs, but it is a little bit more readable and a little more reproducible. All right, so let's get into the weeds a little bit. Um, we're going to plot each of our variables of interest, uh, so maybe number of dropouts and uh, late arrivals on the y-axis and grade on the x-axis. We want to arrange the x-axis by the amount of each. So let's take our code up here. We'll want to reuse this one, right? Because we already, um, we already reordered it up here by number of dropouts. So that one looks good already. I think, I think we're good here. Um, and we'll save it as dropouts plot. Okay, and remember you can always change or save your uh, GG plot or plot objects uh, in R. That's totally doable. We'll run that. And so let's make a, a late or tardy plot. So let's take the dropouts FCT. And we'll pipe that into ggplot. We'll take AES. And we can always specify that this is the mapping argument. And we'll give it uh, x axis, but we want to reorder that, right? So we want to take the grade and we want to actually reorder it by tardy this time. And let's say uh, we want to try to do things a little differently. We'll do median this time. All right, y uh, will be tardy, uh, that tardy column. We'll want to add that geom box plot. And let's add some theming. All right, uh, so we already uh, ran and, and loaded the dropouts plot in memory. Let's go ahead and store the tardy plot as well. And we'll use uh, the patchwork library to arrange these together. All right, very cool. Um, so it might uh, end up reordering our axes based on uh, what actually we supply to that factor reorder function. So. Um, different data, different y-axes on these two plots, and that might be, we might want to rearrange those x-axes, bins, you know, those grades uh, by that variable. All right, so on the left, we've got the number of dropouts increasing by the mean, and on the right-hand plot, we have 
those grades uh, in, uh, ordered by increasing uh, tardiness and, and specifically the median. Okay, and uh, if I wanted to make them pretty colors, I could do that as well. Looks a little nicer. All right, very nice. And I might want to rename this uh, the axis on the uh, tardy plot as well. Okay. And again, uh, re uh, cleaning that up uh, to make the axes look prettier. So let's do that. Um, so up here, we called that grade. Uh, let's call Y dropouts. And then on our tardy plot, let's go ahead and add labs where X equals Uh, grade <laughs> and y equals uh, late students. All right, so once again, let's run these and let's make sure I add my plus sign. <laughs> okay, one more time. All right, looking good. Okay. All right, um, so we may be interested in summarizing our factor uh, a little bit different. So this is uh, another really handy function that you may be wanting to use. Um, so the FCT, count uh, function for the four cats package is helpful for checking the proportions of each level um, of a factor. And so I'll need to supply this argument called proportion equals true. Um, otherwise, it's just reporting the counts. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do is take uh, the data set And I'm actually going to need to pull out the factor that I'm interested in. And but this is because the factor count function expects a vector. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, so this is very, very similar to count, right? If I were to select. Okay. Um, and break it up by grade, right? So giving me very similar information, right? But the FCT count function is really handy uh, because it can give us the proportion as well. And let's give it that proportion. All right, um, so it's nice that it breaks it down into uh, the proportions each of these uh, categories has in your data instead of just the counts as well. All right, um, so let's summarize here. Uh, so the factor class as opposed to the character class uh, allows us to have different orders other than alphanumeric for categorical data. And we can change data to be a factor using mutate and functions like factor or as dot or as underscore factor. Um, and so the as underscore factor is going to order things by first appearance by default. And factor for base R will do alphabetical by default. So factor is nice. We can specify the levels with the levels argument. So if we have a specific order, not just kind of like however they appeared or however alphabetical, 
um, if we have a specific order that we want, we can supply that with the levels argument. And then fact, uh, fact underscore reorder is super useful for reordering your axes on the fly. So if you're plotting and you're like, oh, I'm not really sure I want it in this order, you can reorder that within your ggplot function um, using, using that function there. And uh, importantly, if we're doing any arranging or we're doing any summary tables or anything like that, they will reflect the new order of that factor. So important to keep in mind as you're doing summaries and arranging and stuff as well. All right, so with that, let's get a little bit of practice with factors. Um, we'll go ahead and um, break out here in just a moment. 